We welcome to the next lecture on process control analysis decision and assessment. So, today we are going to uh, look at uh, various methods that are used for stability analysis. So, here are some of the methods that are generally used for uh, stability analysis. One is route array, other is route locus and uh, uh, frequency analysis based stability analysis and then uh, we will briefly look at these methods. We will not go into much detail into these methods. And then you will also understand, uh, see, see everything is uh, like stability analysis of the same system. So, all these things are uh, connected to each other. So, that is what we are trying to uh, look at uh, look at it in this. And then uh, in the next lecture, we will also see some example of Nyquist stability. So, from the uh, lecture on uh, like uh, uh, what are the effects of uh, PID gains on the uh, uh, closest like controllers perform uh, the controllers response uh, we were able to observe this table so if you look at this table uh, one thing that is of interest is like uh, uh, from proportional controller there is an offset that is a steady state error and uh, if there is a change in set point and uh, as and when we increase the value of the proportional gain kp the offset decreases so one natural question we might ask is like why can't i increase this kp uh, why, can't, why can't they keep on increasing this KP and is there any problem associated with this? So, that is what uh, we are trying to ask the question and, and let us let us actually do this experiment again like we did in the previous uh, lecture and then we will see like what exactly happens and why uh, the, what problem it is introducing. So, uh, now we uh, again we take a linear time invariant system uh, which is of this form uh, g of s equal to 1 by s q plus s square plus 2 s plus point 0.1 you can take any other system just for illustration purpose we are taking this particular system and this is the matlab's uh, uh, simulating that we are showing this is the control loop basically we are having a set point here and we are trying to uh, change the step uh, change the set point by a, a step change and then uh, this is the control loop that this is the controller and uh, this is a system system is nothing but uh, 1 by sq plus s square plus 2s plus point 0.1 and we are going to see the value of the controlled uh, variable in the scope and uh, wha what we are trying to do is basically we are going to do a servo response by changing the set point how the uh, control control uh, how the control variable is changing whether it is following the set point change or how it is uh, behaving is what we are going to see. So, when we choose when we have a when we have this controller as a p controller which is only k p and uh, k and k d equal to 0 where proportional gain is 0.8 here. Uh, integral gain is 0 here and the derivative gain is also 0 here. So, it is a p controller. So, basically when we give a, a step input, so this red line is the input basically this is how we want the this is how we want the uh, control variable to change. So, set point this is the set point and this is how the uh, controlled variable is, is actually behaving. So, basically if you we can go back to the previous slide and see this is the red line this is the red line and this is the blue line how the how the response is basically. So, we can I actually if you want to relate it to a physical system basically I, if I say I want to uh, change the flow for example, I want to uh, increase the flow by a step for example, I want to go from uh, uh, say uh, a flow value of uh, 3 meter cube per second to 5 meter cube per second this is how I want it to I, I want the change to happen, but it is changing like this basically something like that you can flow temperature anything you can think of this. Uh, and then now uh, again we ask the question I want to decrease the offset. So, we can definitely we can see clearly there is an offset here. So, I wanted the flow to go to 1, uh, uh, but uh, the it has gone only to up to a 0.9 or something. So, basically I want to decrease this and we have seen that by increasing the value of k p we can actually decrease this. So, Evidently, we can see this value has decreased when you compare to the previous thing. And now uh, again, we have increased KP from 0 0.8 year and uh, to 1.125 year, and and we have seen a decrease in the offset. So again, why don't we increase it little more? So let us let us take uh, let us make it as two KP equal to two, and then we see the response here. So interestingly, what happens here? Uh, this uh, begins oscillating the system goes unstable if you, why it goes unstable because and as time increases uh, the value uh, it, it keeps oscillating and the amplitude of oscillations is going to increase. So, basically if I can ask you a time uh, a time equal to say uh, 10,000 what will be the amplitude it may be definitely like in terms of like uh, 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 some some hundreds or even some thousands etcetera. And also one another thing we can see here is 
this is not a straight line this is like a exponential increase. See if it was a linear increase uh, if you could recollect we saw a linear in linear increase in the amplitude in uh, when we have the concept of resonance and uh, in that what happened we were actually having uh, increasing amplitude even then when there were poles on the imaginary axis and when we excite the system with the sinusoidal input of the same frequency then this was actually a straight line. But now here you can see that it is not a straight line uh, which you can uh, see here uh, uh, from we will just see another another uh, value of kp and then we can confirm that it is exponentially even here you can see clearly it is an exponential increase not a linear increase you cannot strip it a straight line here if you if you are drawn a straight line you would have come something like this but still it is exponential increase. And uh, Another thing okay now what happened to our question of like okay increasing the kp decreases the offset what happened to that observation yeah still we can observe that if you could see here the mean of the oscillations if you can take the mean of this oscillations it will be uh, closer to 1 or even it could be like equal to 1. So, the mean of the oscillations is still like uh, getting closer and closer to a set point value but what happens is it just uh, the output keeps on increasing and system goes unstable. So, this if you could uh, actually uh, like see look into the partial fraction way of analysis basically what it means is we have introduced a pole on right hand side of the. So, basically if you can observe from the partial fraction thing what, what, what you can say is we have introduced some term like e power lambda t uh, and into into a sin wave into sin omega t plus some uh, phi or something and then this lambda is actually like a positive number. So, amplitude of the sine wave is getting increasing with respect to the time. So, when time increases the amplitude also gets increased. So, that is what we observed here. And uh, now again like to illustrate that it is an exponential increase let us take k p equal to 5. So, basically now you can see uh, this you see the value of y axis it is 10 power 12. So, basically this is like in order of uh, uh, 10 power 12 only in 10 power 12 and all these are like. So, basically you can see as time increases the value is not increasing by equal amounts it is increasing like exponentially that is what you can clearly observe from this particular uh, 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 graph. And next we will ask uh, the question like okay we, uh, we when we increase the k p at some point at some point it system goes unstable. So, uh, though the question we can ask is like okay uh, how do we find this value of kp at which the system can go unstable. So, that is what we are going to ask and uh, that is before that question if we are given a gain kp can you uh, determine whether the system is stable or not so that is another question right. So, first question we will ask is okay you give me a kp whether I can uh, uh, find whether the system is stable or not. So, if I know the kp and what I am going to do I am going to write the closed loop transfer function and then uh, I can actually split into partial fractions and then see if there is a pole on the right hand side of the uh, right hand side of the S plane. So, that if there is no pole on the right hand side of the S plane then it basically means that there is no uh, uh, it there, there, there is no problem of stability that system is stable system. But uh, uh, like ok uh, can we can instead of doing into all these partial fractions instead of finding all the poles for a given kp is there any other easier way. So, we can use this outer stability. So, in the outer stability what we can do is we can take a system basically we will say uh, uh, g a of s equal to some uh, s q plus s square plus 2 s plus 0.1. So, this is what we are going to take and then uh, uh, here what we are going to do is uh, let us take uh, the control loop as uh, uh, we are giving a set point here and then uh, we are giving it to the controller which is a p controller for now and then this is given to the system controller's output is given to the system and then this is how the uh, sensor is measuring the value of g of s here. So, this is sensor value and let us take the sensor is a uh, unity transfer function the sensor is actually just measuring it and it has sensor has no lag etcetera. So, if a sensor has some lag we are going to introduce the sensor function also here, but let us take for now sensor is a unity function and then we will we will actually feed back the reading by the sensor back to the uh, 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 and subtract it from the set point. So, basically this is c and uh, this is the error error is nothing but set point minus the value of the control variable as measured by the sensor and then uh, uh, now now this is a proportional controller. So, we have only the k p here. So, now we can easily draw write the closed loop transfer function let us say c or uh, 
uh, okay let us say the closed loop plus cl cl uh, equal to uh, kp into g by 1 plus kp into g so this is what the closed loop transfer function is so now if we can uh, find the k find the value what will be the closed loop function function then it, it turns out to be it will be like kp by sq plus s square plus 2s plus 0.1 plus kp so now let us take this kp to be some value uh, so the question asked here is given a kp can I without resolving into partial fractions can I find whether system is stable or not so that is what the question we uh, asked so now when we say system we can think like this is the full system so now you have a system which is a black box you have a set point of system and you are measure you are seeing the output which is the value of the control variable so basically I, I am I am having a black box which is with the with the controller so I instruct the I, I give the input to the black box as the set point and I observe like how the output of the black box is varying that is what we are going to see this is what like if you can see if you can imagine once we implemented all the control systems what we will basically have is we want to change the input and then we want to see whether the output is following the input or not we are uh, in, inside of it what happens to the control uh, how the controller is performing all these things are can be like we will not focus much on that when we are if you have designed a proper controller etc so basically you can imagine this particular box has become this black box which is the control loop or something so this is what we are going to see now so this is the closed loop transfer function so this becomes cl cl block is nothing but uh, it accepts the input as the set point and it gives the output as the control variable itself so now let us take let us take for now kp equal to randomly we will take one value we'll say one is a num good number so we'll take one as the kp value and then now let us let, let us find out whether this system is stable or not so uh, to find whether the system is stable or not i'm going to just substitute the value of kp here and i'm more concerned about the denominator uh, so basically it becomes 1 by s q plus s square plus 2 s plus 1 dot 1 in, in the router uh, uh, table like uh, how you write you write s q s square s and s power 0 just 1 right so basically we take all the terms of s cube and s here yeah, so one coefficient of s cube is 1 and uh, coefficient of s is 2 and coefficient of s square is 1 here and uh, coefficient s, uh, s power 0 is uh, 1 is like 1.1 constant term is 1.1 uh, so now uh, the first term here uh, we are going to frame this term by cross multiplying this uh, 2 minus cross multiplying this so this 1.1 divided by this term so 1 so let us put this down here okay and uh, so what the, what is the value of this 2 minus 1.1 by 1 which is nothing but 0 0.9 right so 0.9 so uh, basically again again we this becomes this is nothing this is the here there is no term to fill because there is no other terms left out here so this we will take it as 0 so now basically you can cross multiply this subtract and subtract with this so subtraction is basically 0 right so basically what we get is uh, uh, 0 0.9 into 1.1 divided by 0 0.9 so that, that basically becomes 1.1 so everything uh, this becomes 1.1 so all the terms here all the terms here are positive there is no sign change basically and that is not even a 0 here so basically all the terms here are positive so which means that system is stable okay so when all the terms are, are of there is no sign change in this column then basically we say system is stable so definitely you can say system is stable so uh, now uh, as an exercise for you you take the same system you take the same thing but just substitute kp equal to 5 and then see whether that is a sign change here okay and uh, uh, yeah you can see that basically you can try it for yourself and also like uh, uh, try to find out whether there is a relation between the uh, sign number of sign changes and the number of poles uh, uh, basically you can dissolve into partial fraction again and then check out this so that will be an interesting exercise for you it is a very simple thing so uh, maybe you can do it as for yourself so basically what you do you, you count the number of sign changes here and then see whether it and, and resolve this particular term into partial fractions and then see whether uh, 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 see whether there is some relationship between the number of poles on the right hand side of s plane and the number of sign changes here so uh, what if we did not have the value of kp so that is what we are going to ask now 
so maybe uh, like uh, the question maybe to put it in a different way I, I want to ask like what will be the value of kp at which system will go unstable. So uh, in the lecture of the SARS I uh, told like if you uh, uh, what will be the uh, ultimate gain that is what he asked the question. So that is the same question we are going to ask here. So the same exercise we are going to do basically what, what we add we add kp by s q plus s square plus 2 s plus uh, 0.1 plus k p. So, this was the closed loop transfer function we got and then uh, we write this s q by s square s and uh, s power 0. So, this we add 1 and 2 here and uh, this we add 1 and 0.1 plus k p and now you put like 2 minus uh, 0 0.1 plus k p by 1. So, we, we, without calculating s power 0 itself we can say that uh, 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 if this is positive if this term is positive here and it is definitely positive because kp is again. Uh, so, the, if this term will always be positive because uh, you what, what you are going to get here basically is 0 0.1 plus kp into 2 minus uh, uh, 2 minus 0 0.1 plus kp by uh, 2 minus 0.1 plus kp that is what you are going to get here. So, so basically if you can see here this gets cancelled whatever be the thing here this gets cancelled and this will be 0.1 plus kp and provided provided 2 minus 0.1 plus kp is not 0 ok then only then we can cancel this. So, so we let us not bother much about this particular term for now. So, the term which is of interest to us is basically 2 minus 0 0.1 plus kp kp and uh, uh, what we can tell about this is if this is positive then system is stable right because we know if this is positive this also uh, s naught term also becomes uh, s power 0 term also is positive uh, because like this, this this is a positive term not a, not a 0 number. So, this is cancelled and 0 0.1 plus k p is always a positive because k p is a gain which is a positive number and uh, 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 and also one thing to remember is we are not trying to put a negative gain here. Uh, we are uh, since it is a p controller and uh, let us for now take k p only as positive values. So, which is not that it is we cannot put k p as a negative value we can put, but no, for this uh, case or a, for a p controller we do not normally put k p as a negative value. So, basically we will put k p as a positive number. number. So, basically now we can take like uh, uh, this particular term. So, this particular term is the only term of interest. So, for system to be stable this term has to be greater than 0 ok. So, this becomes like 1.9 uh, uh, minus k p greater than 0 which means that k p is less than 1.9. So, first conclusion we can draw is uh, when k whenever k p is less than 1.9 this term is going to be th this particular system is going to be stable. So, that is the straightforward thing we are going to see uh, if k p is less than 1.9 this term is positive and this term is also positive ok. So, that is what uh, we have seen in the first case ok. Uh, so, when k p is equal to 1.9 uh, uh, what basically happens is we, we will uh, see that the poles are on the imaginary axis and uh, we can uh, we, we will see that little later also. So, basically now uh, we have we have find found the value of k p when uh, uh, the system will when the system will will go from being stable to unstable that is the point where it is like like uh, as the SAR told in his lectures it is like the cliff in the, uh, the tip of the cliff right. So, the k p equal to 1.9 is like again at twist system transitions from a unstable system to an unstable system. So, anything k p greater than 1.9 it is going to go to uh, unstable system. So, now let us put this value of k p uh, into the system into the control loop which we and simulate in MATLAB and see what is the response. So, this is how you get the response. So, basically you get a sustained oscillations. So, not neither an increasing oscillation or a decreasing dam dam oscillation. So, you get a sustained oscillation which means that this particular when k p is equal to 1.9 the poles are this particular pole is on the imaginary axis. So, we have a we have a complex so poles occur, uh, complex poles always have occur in complex conjugates ok. So, basically you have uh, two poles and uh, this is on the imaginary axis. So, since it is on the imaginary axis the the if you take the partial fraction and then you take the inverse it becomes like basically e power 0 into some sin omega t plus phi. So, basically this is a constant one. So, basically the amplitude is a constant one. Also remember this initial transients we neglect 
okay. Whenever we talk about uh, frequency response, the initial transition we neglect, this may be due to other poles. The, this is not the only pole we may have in system, this could be due to other, other poles, other, other poles this transient is observed. And uh, so, uh, one more thing, so what are the observations we can make from this? Uh, when we increase the gain, okay, a stable system became an unstable system, which means that the pole has effective, the pole has moved from the left half of the S plane to right half of the S plane, okay. And then, uh, so this makes us ask one question, right? So, okay, if the gain, if we increase the gain, uh, gain and the clo closed loop poles are moving from uh, left to the right, can we plot and then see like how, how these poles are moving? So, that may be one interesting question to ask. So, that, that plot where we plot the poles which is moving from left half of the S plane to the right of the S plane, that is called a root locus. So, root locus what it basically does is it plots the closed loop poles, okay. It plots the closed loop poles because when the closed loop pole every when all the closed loop poles was on the left half of S plane the system was stable. When at least one pole moved to the right half of S plane then what happens basically is like system became unstable. So, it plots the movement of closed loop poles when some parameter, some parameter in here in sense we are interested in the gain. When gain increases, when the gain in the loop increases then how the poles are moving is what the root locus is going to give us. So, we will not go into detail of how to construct this loop, uh, root locus etcetera. You can use MATLAB to uh, plot this and then uh, basically you will see where, uh, what is the, uh, uh, how, how, this, uh, how this root locus lo looks for the system that we are actually interested now. So, if you can see here this is the, uh, uh, the, the, this system is a third order system. So, basically it has three poles and uh, one pole is here, one pole is here and here another pole is there and then uh, the the root loop this is this are if you can see what are these values these are all nothing but the poles of the open loop system this is the open loop system so when we say open loop system it is nothing but the g of s system is open loop system and then close loop system means when we are close the loop and then we find we found that uh, uh, g of s by 1 plus g of s right so this is the closed loop system so this is the open loop and this is the closed loop system okay so now this, this, this trajectory or uh, the, these lines mark how these closed loop poles uh, are uh, changing. So, basically uh, if you if you can resolve this denominator into fractions and find the roots of the denominator, so only it is called the root locus, how the roots move. If you can find the re, uh, roots of this denominator and you might recollect that denominator is also called characteristic polynomial right. So, it is called the characteristic polynomial. So, how it is characteristic of the roots of the characteristic polynomial that is what it is going to show. So, and, and with respect to what with respect to how the change in the gain is gain okay basically how, how the if you increase if you change the gain how, to change the gain how it is going to how it is going to vary. So, when gain equal to 0 it starts uh, when gain equal to 0 and then it goes like how gain, if gain increases how, how it is going to go. So, it is a when gain increases and this also when gain increases. So, basically clearly we can see that when gain increases and here it moves like this basically. So, for these two particular poles what we can see is basically whenever the gain increases okay uh, the root locus is moving the, the, the roots are the poles are moving towards the right half of the S plane and there is a particular point particular gain value when there, there is a particular point and particular gain value wherein the uh, pole is actually meeting the imaginary axis and that particular point at that particular point if you can see here approximately the gain here is uh, uh, 1.9 okay and uh, see this is not exactly on the imaginary axis you can see this is like somewhat tilted towards the uh, to uh, like 0 0.00437. So, uh, it uh, so basically uh, if you can plot exactly at this imaginary axis if you can mark this pointer it would basically say the gain is 1.9 and uh, the frequency the omega value the y axis value is the frequency right. So, uh, and, uh, and that that y axis value is nothing but 1.4 something okay. So, this is this is what the root locus is. So, basically it can it can show you how the poles are moving and uh, uh, so, uh, so this, this gives us two things one is the frequency at which the uh, uh, the frequency frequency at which uh, the the poles are crossing the imaginary axis which is the y value at which it is crossing the imaginary axis and then the gain at which you can uh, it is going to 
uh, go from the left of a face plane to the right of a face plane. So, this is a root locus thing. And uh, there are some some things that you can try for yourself. This is mostly taught in like uh, uh, a standard like control uh, course. But uh, let us not focus on all these things much because uh, we are we are uh, see when we read uh, uh, with whatever content that is being taken in this uh, in this course uh, without proven root locus uh, you can actually solve uh, the problem. So this is just another method that you can just know. That's what. So we are not going to go into detail of why how we are going to calculate all this, how, how we are going to plot all these values. So, but something like to, to just have fun with root locus, you can just observe certain things basically. So, uh, root locus starts at open loop poles and uh, ends up ends at open loop zeros. So, why it starts at open loop poles? Basically, if you can if you can go to the previous slide and then we can easily see right when when uh, k p equal to zero. So this this was denominator right. So, when k p equal to 0 this, this this becomes the same as the open loops denominator. So, we, we add the open loop system g of s is nothing but 1 by s cube plus s square plus 2 s plus 0.1. So, so basically now uh, what happens when k p is becoming equal to 0 uh, this becomes same as uh, this uh, closed loops transfer functions denominator or characteristic polynomial is becoming the same as open loop transfer function denominator. So, uh, when k p equal, when k n equal to 0, when k n equal to 0, uh, the closed loops characteristic polynomial or closed loops poles is same as the open loops, uh, uh, is same as the open loops poles. So, because the characteristic polynomial is the same, so the poles are going to be the same. So, it starts at the open loop, uh, uh, it starts at the open loop poles and then it ends at the open loop zeros. Uh, and then uh, the max number of branches of root locus is nothing but maximum number of uh, poles of zeros because this you can easily see from this thing because every root locus starts from open loop poles and ends at open loop zeros. No, so basically, like uh, how many number of uh, open loop poles and zeros should be there? How many branches should be there? Basically, it's maximum of either maximum of uh, poles or zeros. So whichever is maximum, that's that, that many branches you are going to have. Okay, and uh, one that one thing we can do with root locus is what if we had a zero and what if we had a pole? So that's what we are going to do. So what we can basically do, we add the g of s is nothing but one plus s cube plus s square plus two s plus point one. This is what we had. So what if we multiply this by s plus one? So and then what is the effect of addition of this particular pole is going to have on the root locus thing? So now something interesting happens, right? So basically, what happens? Uh, this is the imaginary axis. So, this is the imaginary axis. If I multiply by a 0, uh, this uh, root locus got shifted towards the uh, like uh, that, 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 is, that is no now, now you can see that, that is, there are no poles on the right hand side of the s plane. So, whatever be the gain value you increase, uh, this, this is not this particular system is not going to go to unstable. So, now uh, one uh, challenge for our, one exercise for you is like uh, uh, to do something with the system uh, so that uh, you can make this you can for some gain value you can make the system unstable uh, not you can, you can add a pole or you can add a zero or you can modify instead of putting a p controller you can try to put some other form of control that you may know and then you can try to see like whether at some point this some some pole is going to cross this imaginary so only when this particular pole branch is going to cross into the uh, right hand side of s plane that is when it is going to go to unstable. So, basically what we wanted you to do is you you, you change the system by adding uh, certain poles or certain zeros or changing the controller structure from p to p a or something and then see whether for something it goes into the right hand side for some particular gain value. So, that is what you, you can do it for yourself. So, just have fun with this. But the, the this slide what we are trying to say is this root locus is can be used to analyze like what is the effect of addition of poles or addition of zeros. And uh, one more thing that is normally like uh, 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 like when we talk about this poles and zeros we talk about something called a dominant pole. So, what is this dominant pole? Uh, see everything uh, you can uh, you can easily visualize when you do this partial fraction thing. So, so we are emphasizing the partial fraction thing uh, to understand lot of control uh, concepts because like mostly we can imagine we can actually find out uh, most of the concepts easier when we imagine that way. So, basically when what we say dominant which, which pole which pole is going to have a bigger impact on the uh, 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 like uh, uh, on the response of the system on the response of the system which pole is going to have a bigger impact that is what we are going to say dominant pole. So, 
basically let us say we have two poles uh, let us say one pole is say uh, lambda 1 plus uh, uh, um, say j uh, e power ok we will take we will resolve this partial fraction and then we found, let us assume that we finally found this uh, e power uh, minus lambda 1 uh, t uh, sin uh, omega t plus phi 1 this was the response of first pole I am mean, assuming you took the partial fraction and then you took the inverse Laplace transform you simplified everything and you got this particular thing and as other pole you are going to have i power minus lambda 2 and uh, sin omega t plus uh, phi 2 uh, now when since we have sin it is like complex poles ok. So that is what we are going to have. So basically if you can see here if lambda 1 is uh, higher if the value of lambda 1 is higher ok if value of lambda 1 is higher than value of lambda 2 and uh, since I put minus here it is uh, clear that these poles are on the left half of the plane. So basically we have say lambda 1 somewhere uh, uh, here and uh, magnitude of lambda 1 is greater than the magnitude of lambda 2 basically so it means that lambda 2 is here. So, so now, now if you can see it is minus 3 and it is minus 2 so 3 is greater than 2 that is what basically it is going to say. So now if you can see here my e power minus lambda 1 t and d e power minus lambda 2 t. So which of this term is going to have a bigger impact? So when, when lambda since lambda 1 is higher uh, so e, e, what it does is this particular e power minus lambda 1 t if you can plot here it is going to fall uh, uh, like exponentially at a very high rate. So when uh, for the same time e power minus lambda 1 t would be like very less value when compared to e power minus lambda 2 t lambda 2 t because lambda 2 is greater than lambda 1 lambda 1 is going to pull it down so fast because as time increases it is going to pull the value so fast. So this is going to die down fast. So when compared to lambda 2 lambda 1 we can neglect. So lambda 2 is the dominant pole uh, you can actually you can you can plot this you can take these two values you can plot for the sa same time and then see in MATLAB like how, how it is responding so that is one way to do but we can easily see from max or by intuition this particular term is going to fall slower decrease slower and this particular term is going to fall faster uh, because lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2. So then what we say this term this term is this pole is not causing a bigger impact when we in comparison to lambda 2. So lambda 2 is a dominant pole than compared to lambda 1. So the poles that are closer to the imaginary axis is going to have a bigger impact so that is what so poles that are closer to the imaginary axis is called a dominant pole. So you can just remember these terms these terms you can you may just get uh, 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 some uh, some someone talking about this term so you should not like think like this is something new or something it is something like very easy to observe when we do the partial fraction thing. So if you want to understand it more just take some lambda 1 value lambda 2 value and then see the response of the system ok so that is what you will be able to see. So so, so the, to again like to, re, uh, to summarize basically what happens both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are stable or on left hand side of explain so both are going to fall down. So and if this is how the uh, lambda 1's pole is going to fall down or for lambda 2 it is going to take much longer time to fall down so that is what it is going to say. So this is how lambda 2 will fall down. So, can, so lambda 1 is falling faster faster is getting 0 faster but lambda 2 is having it taking it some time to go to 0 so basically lambda 2 is more significant than lambda 1 so it is lambda 2 is dominant pole that is what we are going to say. Okay, fine. Now uh, uh, we are going to ask uh, another question. So what, what we are going to tell is, uh, okay, given a system, given a transfer function, we are we are able to uh, tell that what value of kp the system is going to go to unstable. But in reality, how useful all these things are. Okay, uh, but the uh, uh, it's something like given a model which is accurate, we can find the exact value of kp the system will go unstable. But we also have seen that all models are approximations ok uh, like uh, there is a you, there, there is a uh, one phrase that is actually very interesting which, which says like all models are wrong some are useful so, so we are actually looking at some u, uh, useful approximations of system as model ok. So, uh, so whatever we have as a transfer function like we are a transfer function sq plus s square plus 2s plus 0.1 if this is going to represent uh, say a boiler 
okay i'm just taking some some random word okay boiler okay if this is going to be a uh, process and this is going to be transfer function then uh, this itself is uh, an approximation so with this approximation uh, if i find a kp value we don't know whether how, uh, we uh, like that particular value of kp exactly at which it is going to go to unstable uh, all these things doesn't make sense when this itself we say is an approximation right so then we then kp we can say is like okay kp is somewhat closer to 1.9 it's going to go to unstable but we don't know exactly at what kp it will go to unstable our system will behave even this is a linear system this boiler itself may not be a linear system so uh, all the there are a lot of approximations lot of assumptions so in in real life we are not ex interested exactly in finding the va value like exact value of this kp uh, where it goes unstable but we are uh, we are trying to find out what range of kp it is going to be stable and what range it's going uh, somewhat like if you can change uh, uh, if kp is some uh, approximately 1 then we say it is stable if kp is closer to say 1.8 then we say it may go to unstable so this is a qualitative comparison that we, we are going interested not in a uh, so ha so hard quantitative comparison so this is when we go for uh, the frequency response thing analysis uh, which uh, we can see in in the future lecture so basically we, we, we what we are going to do is like we are going to uh, take the frequency response analysis what we have done body plot etc and then we are going to uh, uh, see the effect of uh, the, the, we are going to see how this frequency response analysis is going to get useful in stability analysis thing so that's what we are going we'll see in the next lecture thank you